Live, Radio Citizen Television in the house is Court Secretary General Francis Atuoli. Who I tell you, folks, you better sit back. Better yet, lean forward. Better, better yet, stand up because it's going to be on fire. SG, the story the other day that you were fired from KCB board. What is that story? That was a false story. That is what we call fake news. Mm. Because I have been a director for 16 years in, in, in National Bank of Kenya. NBK, yes. I, I have never been a, a director in Kenya Commercial Bank. Mm -hmm. And what happened, we, I was part of the team that negotiated for uh, a KCB uh, taking over National Bank of Kenya. And uh, it's me who resisted uh, representing the small shareholders in the bank that that bank should not go into the hands of individuals uh, known as uh, strategic investors. Mm -hmm. We said this is a bank that has been built over the years by taxpayers' uh, money. And if we are to hand it over, we can hand it over to where government has interest, where public has in, uh, 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 interest. Okay, and that is so, Kenya so KCB Bank. has taken over? Absolutely. So you what, you stepped aside? Or? I, I stepped aside. After 16 years, and even those directors who are there are transitional directors for two years, mm. uh, handing over, trying to do this and that. Yeah. Uh, a bank that I've led for 16 years, I have a clean certificate. A party was thrown to me uh, when I was, and my colleagues, when we were leaving as directors, we handed over the bank to Kenya Commercial Bank. So you bank. weren't fired? I have never been a director in the Kenya Commercial Bank. So you weren't fired? So I was not fired. Uh, All right, I'm glad we've cleared that. Yeah, this is fake news. Because <laughs> uh, I've never been fired. Yeah. Even where I used to work in the then, uh, I started with the then East African Post and Telecommunication Administration, which became East African Post and Telecommunication Corporation. Mm -hmm. It became Kenya Pro uh, Corporation and Kenya Telecoms. Yes. When I was leaving after 19 years service, I just retired and I'm a pensioner. Over there? Over there. Are you going to retire from Kotu anytime soon or are you just going to be there forever? I wanted to leave 2011, you know. My colleague said we had just uh, gotten a new constitution which was promulgated 2010 and we were instrumental to the Kenya's current constitution. Yeah. In Article 41, we are reflected there. So they appealed to me to give them another five years. I, uh, we, uh, up to 2016, uh, when I said now it is my time to go home, they said, Francis, where are you going? You are going nowhere. Uh, so uh, I said, yes, if you want me to continue, uh, I, I can't say no because uh, I, I had decided to go home. Yeah. And uh, my colleagues said uh, they have got to give me more five years. Uh, and uh, I'm now trying to negotiate with them so that in 2021, I can exit, mm. yeah, because I want also to lead some private life, to sure. do some other things and so on. And I've put in a very good service, wonderful service. Uh, I'm currently renovating Tom Boyer Labor College to a world-class college, mm. like those other colleges you see in the United States of America. That's what it's uh, going to be like. Uh, yeah, I want to leave it as a legacy. I have put up a resource center, a new one, assisted by the Kenya government during Kibaki's time. And I've done a lot for workers in this country. We have brought in new labor laws. We have brought in a lot of changes in labor legislation. Mm. And uh, uh, through that, I've become an international labor leader. I'm number one in Africa, number two in the world. And, so, and, and in Kenya, you're the third most popular person you absolutely, once said. Absolutely, absolutely. You said that yourself? Uh, not myself. Even if you ask, uh, go to any primary school, <laughs> even in Muranga, Kangema. Ask who is the... Uh, number one. Number one. They will tell you, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Number two. Uh, Raila Mododinga. Number three. Francis Atuoli. <laughs> yeah. who's, who's four? Four, I can't know currently, unless we ask the, those guys who cut out uh, some research on popularity <laughs> to come up and tell us who is number four. Uh, Sinovate or somebody. Uh, so somebody. Yes. Yeah. There are a lot of people who are popular. In Kenya, yes, we have musicians who are popular, right? Uh, sports people, uh, sports LU people who are popular. Yeah, I keep talking. Yeah. It's also popular. It could be it's known. I remember recently I was uh, uh, in Belgium, Brussels, uh -huh. and uh, when uh, I went to a shop, uh, somebody asked me, "Where do you come from? Ke from Kenya? Oh, marathon." Uh, keep talking. You know, he's also popular globally. Yes, yes. <clears throat> but positive. Uh, uh, his, his popularity is a positive popularity. Mm. And we have so many people, others who are popular negatively. You can be popular 
uh, and you are popular negatively. Yeah. Say, for example, uh, and I said on this uh, bench one day, yes. uh, uh, Nyanza and Western Kenya, mm. we had uh, a popular uh, cattle rustler. His name was Miguel. He used to come from a young Nyong's uh, constituency mm -hmm. or place in Seme. Yeah. This guy was popular in both Western Kenya and Nyanza because he could come to your house at night uh, and he does some magics. You sleep and uh, he gets into your house. He cooks, he, slot, he do a lot of slaughtering of <laughs> everything, including uh, uh, condom, boozy, yeah. cuckoo, everything uh. with his team. Uh, they feed from your food and everything. Uh, they are okay. In the morning, they get away with uh, your animals. They go away. And, and you're still asleep. You are still sleeping. You will sleep up to midday. You see, and that guy was popular. He was called Miguel. Uh, <laughs> that was not positive popularity. Right. Yeah, but he was popular. Yeah. Yeah, so we have a lot of people who are popular in different ways. <laughs> Land grabbers, uh, what have you. People who are involved in corruption of yeah. all types. Yes. Uh, people who are in offices, they can pick up their telephones and call a junior officer in a government department that please direct this tender to Mr. Swan. So mm. they are very popular. Uh, or do a lot of funny things. Yes. Uh, and you see, th those are things that negate the principles of creation of employment in our country. SG, you just mentioned corruption. What do you think of uh, the, the trio of uh, DCI, uh, Kinoti, DPP, Nodin Haji, and ESCC head, uh, Tovik? What, what do you think? Let me tell you, those boys can do a Talib, good job. Yeah. They can do a good job. Those three can do a good job. They can do a good job. But? But I'm suspecting there is somewhere, or some, somebody somewhere, who is pulling strings mm. when they want to move this, when they want to move, hold on for the time being. Mm -hmm. Hold on for the time being. Yeah. And that will not help this country. Let those three young men move and correct the anomalies that have been created by Kenyans in different departments of our civil service. Mm. Let them. They should be left free, completely free, yeah. if you want to eradicate poverty. Let me tell you, you know why people cannot invest in Kenya? multinationals and big companies, big corporate companies and so on, they wouldn't like to invest in a country where there is corruption. And I will give you a good example. Mm -hmm. the, German, the German Chamber of Commerce organized some people to come to Kenya to see whether they can assist us by providing us with transport. Okay. Yeah, say for example, to have uh, uh, those easy transport you yes. see in Europe, yeah, yeah. in the United States of America, yeah. whether they can upgrade. You know, Kenya is the only country in the world which have no pu organized public transport. Correct. So when they arrived here, they carried out their survey from Embakas to here. You are aware that if you drop somebody at Jomo Kenyatta Airport, mm -hmm. and this person is going to Dubai, he will arrive in Dubai before you come back to the city. Yes. You're still in traffic. You are still in traffic, John. Yeah. So they did all those surveys on Dika Road, everywhere, Limuru, and then uh, now they were directed to the office which was in charge of projects in government. You know, before they met a big man, there are middlemen outside mm -hmm. there who said, oh, you are the people who have been carrying out the research on transport, provision of transport. How much do you think it is going to cost? I said, oh, this will cost Kenya this much and so on. What, what would be the cut for Buanam Kubwa? Eh? How much will it, uh, why can't you little bit increase so that Buanam Kubwa, uh, the one you want to see? Yes. Yeah, he will not tell you this. It is us to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, we negotiate for him. How much do you think he will have? One billion, two billion, three billion? They said, what? Ah, there's some, will it be official? Where will that money come from? Mm -hmm. From taxpayers? These guys packed and went back to Germany. Huh? They couldn't stand it? They couldn't stand it. So at our international meet, because I'm an international guy at the yes. meeting, somebody approaches me, he tells me, Francis, your country, you're coming from a funny country. Very good climatical condition, very good people, hardworking people. But leadership is that's the way they behave. And they will before you invest in that country, yeah. you get a middleman or brokers negotiating for a big card for a big man. You know, people cannot do that. You can't do that. So they say you but, people are corrupt. Absolutely. Look at this highway to Mombasa, the new expressway. Americans got that tender. 
300 billion shilling, uh -huh. they stopped it. Yeah, they will stop it. Not leave it at that. They said you Kenya's, know, you know, Kenya's in when, debt. Ki, when Kibaki was leaving, he had an idea of decongesting Nairobi. Mm. Do you know that? No. By coming up with Konza City. Yes, Konza. Where is Konza City? It's nowhere. And German, the, the, I can remember Koreans, uh, South Koreans, and other investors were willing to put in billions to assist Kenya to have a post-independent city. It is only Kenya which doesn't have a post-independent Kenya yeah. city. Yeah. Look at Tanzania, they mm -hmm. have uh, Dodoma, Dodoma. Yes. Uh, Nigeria, they have Abuja, Abuja. Yes. Uh, South Africa, uh, uh, Pretoria. Absolutely, absolutely, you go to, and, and Sun City in South Africa Sun too. Sun City as well. And you go to uh, Egypt, they have Sheikh. Uh, yes. You go to Morocco, they have Marrakesh. Uh -huh. Yeah, you see? We have what? Besides uh, Rab Rabat and yes. uh, Casablanca. Yes. And we need to, you know, even... The four pillars of which President Uhuru Kenyatta wants. If he would have addressed the Konza city mm -hmm. issue, he would have gotten that flat. Housing, mm -hmm. that city was going to come up mm -hmm. with new housing. Mm -hmm. Food, people would have, automatically farmers would have gone to their farms to make sure that people in that city have food. Fed. Yeah. yeah. And then universal health care, modern hospitals yes. would have been found. Manufacturing. There. Manufacturing, everything. That Konza city would have addressed that. But Next, it, and I can tell you what, I remember I told you one day here, when we were involved in Goldenberg in 1992, yep. if you can remember, mm. that is when we were involved in Goldenberg, 1992, yeah. scandal. Yes, I remember. That is when new Shanghai, the new city next to Shanghai, yes. well, they started building it in 1992. 2002, after, you know, I go there all day. I could net Africa at Asia at international level. Mm. So I'm telling you what I know. Yes. 2002. They had come up with a new amazing city. If you go to New Shanghai, mm. wide roads, buildings with uh, runways. What? I'm telling you. This caravan aircraft said, what have yes. you? You can land on the top of a building in New Shanghai and then you get into your office. Uh? Fantastic. And where are we? We are still, we don't know even where we are. But I think something President Moy said, and people didn't take him serious. There might be something wrong with this black skin. <laughs> because you see, let me tell you, yes. there are good policies in yes. place. And we contradict what we ask our own professionals to do for us. Mm. They come up with very nice plans for the country and what have you. And then we contradict. Today, if it were not, look, uh, Nairobi shouldn't be where it is today. Yeah. This would be a wonderful, you know. But something went wrong. Something went wrong. And you know, in any given country, mm. there must be a strategic plan. We keep, on we keep saying we have one, but I don't know where it is. It's gathering dust somewhere. And when they say 2030, it doesn't matter whether President Uru will be there, whether President Kibaki will be there. Whoever comes is supposed to follow suit. Okay. This is what happens okay. in Okay, so let me ask you this, SG. What do you think of BBI, this Building Bridges Initiative, which is the report is about to be released. They're waiting for President Kenyatta to come back from Russia, and they release it. What do you think? I think that is going to, to succeed. BBI will be a successful event or uh, Why do you say that? For Kenyans. Why do you say that? They want to create positions for themselves. No, you see, let me tell you, people don't understand. How, how has North, you know, in, in the North, the North African, parts of North Africans, and even in the higher North, uh, after Mediterranean, how have they developed? They were looking for a constitution that suits them. It is not a question of creating jobs for themselves. Mm. If after every election, Kenyans can't walk freely, we in Western Kenya, we can't access Kisumu yeah. Airport. Yeah. And that is the Kisumu Airport is what we use. And the Eldoret Airport. Mm. Because people are fighting. What type of a country is that? And if we have realized it is because of this issue of a winter takes it, or do we correct that? So is, is, is it better to have five positions? To even six, people? even ten. Huh? Yeah. It's even the means that would be peace. But it's top heavy. I mean, how are you going to feed? How are you going to... It is not a question of feeding. Executive. Feeding is another thing. Let me tell you. If you have been to America, United States of America. Yes. Mayors in the United States of America or uh, councilors, mm -hmm. similar to councilors mm -hmm. here, they are not on salary. They are on allowance when they meet. Yeah. 
and see how they have developed those cities. And the richest person, the heaviest investor in that city is the person they make a mayor. Yes. Not a hawker like in Africa. A hawker becomes in charge of the investors. A hawker becomes in charge of a city. A hawker becomes in charge of investments. You yeah. know, a hawker becomes in charge of uh, planning, setting of direction into masses. You know, I, simply because uh, he has support or the comes from this community and yes. so on. Yes. It's not like that. So if they create these positions, right? A powerful, a powerful prime minister. A ceremonial president, two deputy prime ministers, a vice president. Come on, man. Are we just, are we just satisfying tribal uh, warlords? It will not be satisfying. It will be one way of making Kenyans realize peace. It will be one way of addressing what has been early Kenyans as a nation. It will be one way of making us belong to one another, have that sense of belonging, of which Kenyans have the nations they don't have. People do a lot of funny things. We don't want about that. Mm. You see, in countries uh, in Arabic world, uh, you know, we have kings, we have what? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and if it is serving them well, uh, they have accepted it. There is, this, there is no issue of democracy when yes. elections will come yeah. on and so on. Yeah. I was trying to advise Ugandans, my friends, Ugandans, mm. that they must continue supporting Museveni. Why? Because if there is peace in Uganda, why do they want to change leaders and then they continue fighting, uh, having refugees time and again yeah. crossing over yeah. to Kenya and so on? Don't forget, he's yeah. been there. If that thing. leader is keeping them well, uh. let them continue supporting him for the benefit of the country. 33 years later. So many world over. Let me tell you, Makele now. Makele has been a chancellor of uh, uh, Germany for how long? Yeah, at least what? Huh? More than 10 years? Not more than 10 years, more than 20 years. <laughs> if it was in Africa, yeah. people would be making a lot of noise. Makele has been there for more. Go and check. She right. has been there for more than 20 years. If it was here in Africa. It would be a dictator. Uh -huh. You know, okay, but listen. politics, politics, yeah, yeah, yeah. politics must be pegged on culture and traditions okay. of the people. Okay, one of Our the, culture yes. is a bad culture. It's bad. Yeah. Why? Because people, after elections, people must fight. You know? And if that is the case, why can't we look for a cure? Mm. And Akiwa is in the constitution. Okay, so one of the people who said they're not interested in, in, in being president or, or being in charge next round is President Kenyatta. He wants to go home. He's not interested. Let me tell you, Kenyatta didn't, help, didn't, didn't elect himself. He was elected by the people. And he cannot make a decision for himself. People will make a decision for him. He's our leader. And if where he comes from Say we have about six slots. And they come with him saying, our slot, we are giving it to President Kenyatta. Yeah. He will do very little. See, in 1992, when we, had, when we removed Section 2A in our constitution, yes. and we amended our constitution, we had a new constitution, President Moy had to serve 10 years. Even after amendments of BPI, yeah. Kenyatta can say he still wants to be a president. It you, will be a new outfit. It will be a new constitution. But you yourself have, has con have constantly said... He's too young to retire. You said it. Absolutely. Do you know why? Why? If a young man has money and uh, has uh, connections and uh, he can move, he can give you a lot of problems. That is why a place for him must be sought out. He will give people a lot of problems because mm. he has connections. President Kenyatta now has local and international connections. Do you think when he retires, he'll just go to Katunda and sit there? <laughs> sitting like this, watching things going this way and that way, paying taxes. Yeah. President Kibaki retired? Yeah, because of the age, he accepted his retirement. Oh. President Moy, because of the age, he accepted his retirement. Yeah. Okay. Deputy President William Ruto is moneyed, yeah. is powerful, yeah. has connections. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is how he's moving. He's moving yeah. fast. Yeah, because of what? Money is in the head, power is in the head, everything is in the head, the movement is in the head. When he wants to, you know, you see how. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate. If he had a good advisor, uh, he would have been with the president. You think he, advise, uh, he has bad advisors? Absolutely. How do you go to a meeting? The president is sitting here, the head of state, and you are articulating the, the, the policies of the government. What will he say when he stands up? What do you think he's thinking? The one who is sitting down. Mm. 
And when President Kibaki was going, this sword, a symbol of national unity and protection of a nation, yeah. was given to Uhuru Kenyatta. By Karang, if you know Karang, Karang is my chairman at NSSF. Correct. He's the one who handed over to Kibaki, Kibaki to hand it over to Uhuru Kenyatta. And the president is a president. He might be weak. Don't think since he's weak, he doesn't understand so many things in the government and you understand them with all those projects that are to be put in place, yeah. is you to articulate. Mm. This is the man. If he had advisor, advisor would tell him, my friend, when the president is sitting, just welcome him, let him talk. The way more used to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Where he is not, you see, let him talk. And if he says, if he tries to mention your name, stand up like this. I was with him in the funeral somewhere. Yes. With the president of Uru Kenyatta. Mm. And I'm older than him. I'm an elder. But when he started talking, he mentioned, let me tell you something about Francis Atwood. I stood up immediately. Why? Yeah? Why? He's the symbol of the national unit. I don't, I, I don't know what he wants to say. <laughs> because he must stand up and say, these are totally here. Where are police officers? <laughs> Can you, you know? He has all those powers. Yes. Yeah. But that, you know, what, what you're standing up could, could, could be a sign of psychophancy. Not psychophancy. Yes. It's a respect to a symbol. No, Moi used to do that. People used to stand up because they were so scared of him. Not scared. When we give you a position, that position must be respected. It's not your position. The position of leadership belongs to people. Everybody in Kenya would have been a president. I would have loved also to be a president. But God picks only one person to lead you. Mm. And that person who has been chosen by him to lead you is the person people voted for. It's a sign of respect to the leadership. And you, you think go, you have gone to Japan. Oh, yeah. Have you been to Japan? Oh, yes. Say, I Japanese have Tokyo and you After the Hiroshima issue. Uh, uh, everyone's bowing down. Yeah, everyone's yeah, bowing down. Yeah. You don't know when to, not, to yeah, stop bowing. I, I so, <laughs> they're saying hello. They're bowing, they're bowing. Yeah. Arigato. Uh, uh, Domo arigato. <laughs> yeah. Domo. Absolutely. Yeah. That is a symbol of peace and unity. And they were it bombed during World weakness. War II in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Absolutely. They knew how a war can destroy a nation. So you think the people around the president disrespect him? Some, yes, of course. Some. Some mostly do that. Because... Uh, uh, first of all, the team around him, some don't know, amongst you people who can help him. And some also are bought by his enemies to make sure you, Jeff Koidange, who has something good for this country, you cannot move close to the president. Mm. Those who are around him, they are bought yeah. by president's enemies. Yeah. That if Koinange is seeking an appointment with his excellent president. Don't allow him to see him. Mm. And they'll make because, sure. Uh, yeah. Because you are going to expose them. So those people who are around him, they are also doing business. Mm. This is a funny country. <laughs> <laughs> it's insecure people. Yeah, it's insecure, insecure people. Insecure people. Yeah. yeah. And they think you're going to spoil for them. Absolutely. If you move close... Uh, like sometimes back uh, uh, during the first tenure of the president, the yeah. first term, yeah. uh, w when you make an appointment, because my position allows me uh, to, to see the president, yes. I'm leading four million Kenyan workers. And some people, you know, they, they called me uh, names. Uh, some, they called me uh, names of which uh, are unbelievable. And you couldn't so, see the president? Some, some can say, a tool is idiot, a tool talks too much. Uh. Uh, some even sent me messages saying, oh, you, you know, they don't know. Somebody leading four million Kenyans, it's not a simple person. It's not easy. In any given nation. So that you couldn't see so, the president? So, you couldn't get an appointment? No, when you get an appointment to see the president, you will see the somebody who is insecure is already also coming there. <laughs> you ask yourself, how did this guy know I'm going to see the president? Yeah. He's already there. He wants to hear what you want to tell mm. the head of state. You know? Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. No. And this is allowed by those people who are around. He's excellent, the president. All right, SG, let me take a break, come back and talk about our debt ceiling. There was a call the other day to raise it to 9 trillion from 5.8. Mm. Are we borrowing too much?
Absolutely. Are we boring too much? Too much. And also, Kazi kwa vijana, pesa kwa waze. Youth unemployment. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna blow at at some point. But I've you, said here time huh? again. Maybe even before we come back, let me tell you. People need to think. A nation is just like you and your family. If you don't think, if you don't make right decisions, your people will languish in poverty. And I've said here time and again. I have told Kenyans that poverty is a concept. Mm. People go to the market just to buy poverty as you go and say, this you want this glass here. Nobody was born by God or made by God to be poor. Or no nation was made to be poor. Mm. If nations were to be poor, Dubai would be a poor person. It would be a desert. Because it's in the desert. Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Egypt. It, it, it is it, it is ineptness. It's you know it, it's a ceiling. People put ceiling in their thinking, and then when you do like that, yeah. you accept you are poor. Or maybe they want to keep their people poor so they can. Rely- no, no, no. It is not like that. Yes, it is. I don't believe it. Is yes, like it that. is. It isn't. It is because we can't make right decisions. If you see the conflicting decisions Kenyans make particularly Kenyan leaders. Yeah. How do you start campaigning immediately after election? You start campaigning. Immediately. Immediately. After election is five years Five away. years ago. You are a misplaced leader. You are a logical leader. You are not, you are a legal leader. Mm. Because a true leader, immediately after elections, you are mandated. If you had manifest of your party, if you had some promises you made to the people, you come down and sit with economists. You have a team of economists, a team of lawyers, a team of entrepreneurs, and you come up with a, a strategic plan that will create employment. Let me tell you, Kibaki in 2002 when he took over government, we in Kano, because I'm Kano, we had run down economy. We were at minus, point, uh, minus 2% of Good. our total GDP. Yes. At that time, minus. Mm. But after three years, that is uh, 2005, yes. banks were hawking. We are going to offices on a pay slip, you get money. And my economy, small, my yeah. small Huisero, uh, small yes. hat, small house I did put up in Huisero. How small? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, it was on a pay slip from from Barclays Bank. And the economy grew ah. to 7.1. When we went fighting, we were at 7.1. Correct. It, it, it is just a question of things. And you know why Kibak managed that? Tell me. At five, Kibak has closed business, government business. He goes to his house. 5 p.m.? Yeah, 5 p.m. No brokerage, no people brokering no. around. And here? I don't know. I don't go there regularly. Okay. Uh, but I don't know what happens there. Oh. But I think in this second term of President Uhuru is a lot. It's very much a lot. Mm. This is second term. Yeah. But the first term was horrible. To speak the truth. It was a field day. Let me tell you, Jeff. Tell me. Listen to me, Jeff. I'm listening. The truth is God. He who dwells in truth, he who lives in truth, he who speaks the truth, is with God. And he will never defeat him. The truth is that the first term of President Uhuru Kenyatta was mad with a lot of malpractices in the system. Mm. We would have not been where we are today. This second term of his, he's a lot. Mm. And he's now walking alone and listening to his advisors. I listened to his speech on Mashuja Day. Yeah. That was a speech, a real speech from a head of state. On that speech. It was a true speech yeah. from a head of state. What took so long? I listened to it properly detailed, and the, and, and the president was not repeating himself. Mm. And it had a lot of references. Speaking of references, we're going to take a break, come back, and talk some more, SG. We'll talk some more. Politics, state of the nation. You still haven't said, BB, is there a referendum next year? There is a referendum or parliament will do it. If there will be no referendum, then parliament will do it as per the requirement of the constitution. Wow. Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff.
At Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag is JK Live. My goodness, this man, he's spewing. Bob Wawino. I'll read your tweets. Let's just, after the break, back in a moment. I'm also tossing my phone by mistake.